Now in the recent years, they've come up with something called a tactical pin. Now in the old days, we used to always teach that you could take a pencil or a pin and just jam it in somebody's eye and run away. Well now they have fancy ones that are made out of aircraft aluminum. This one has a nice flat top where I could cap it and a very sharp point. Now to get this one on an airplane, I would probably take this off, cover up the sharp point, and carry it as a pin where it could go on an airplane. I have read a couple times where some tactical pins have been looked at by TSA, some not. Depends on how much of a weapon it looks like. Some of them are real fancy, and they have this little sharp end on it like this. That's, they call that a DNA catcher, because when you hit somebody, it's going to leave a little mark and it's going to leave some skin and stuff in there for, to give to the police later for DNA. Some of them might have a carbide tip like this one as a glass breaker. Wouldn't be a bad idea to have a pen like this handy in your car, besides having a writing utensil, if you needed to break glass, either you come up to an accident and need to break someone, or you needed to break yours to get out, you have that carbide tip here to break glass. So another handy little item to have. So those are some of your most common ones. The last impact weapon I'll show you would be this one. And here we can use this, like the others, it's a short little impact weapon. We can open it up and have a longer club. Okay, you can see law enforcement carrying these. And so now I have this steel baton that can hit different places to use to protect myself. Which one's best? All of them? None of them? That depends on you. With any weapon that you're going to carry for self-defense, regardless if it's one of these, pepper spray, a firearm, a knife, there's several things that you must remember. First, you need to be trained in how to use it. A weapon will do you no good if you don't know how to use it. You also have to carry it. A weapon will do you no good at home on the dresser. It also has to be accessible. If you're being attacked and it's at the bottom of your purse or somewhere deep in a pocket where you forgot where it's at, it's going to do you no good. So you need to make the personal decision of what are you comfortable carrying? What do you know how to carry? What will you carry? and carry it so it's accessible that you can use in the emergency when you need it. Because all of us have to take personal responsibility for our own safety. But that doesn't mean we have to go unarmed. If attacked, I teach to attack back. And when you attack back, you need to hit them hard. And there's no reason not to have something in your hand so you can hit them harder. 